good evening, everybody. How are y'all on this fine Wednesday night? Enjoying the weather? Yes. Days like today, Oklahoma weather is fantastic. <laughs> There's days we grump a lot, but sometimes it's, it's right on. Oklahoma gets it right. And today's one of those days. So welcome, everybody. Let's welcome our online audience. Give them a shout. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start out with our announcements tonight, um, talking about our new app. Um, hopefully everybody saw the little video that we had on Sunday, but also we have cards. Uh, I don't know if they were handing them out, but they are out there in guest services and on our little shelves. And it looks like the little house, that's the app, and then it has all the instructions on the back. So on the new app, um, it has our bulletin is on there now. We will no longer be doing paper bulletins, so all of our events and announcements will be on there in color. It's really cool, so if you haven't got it, make sure you get it and look at that. You can give through the app, um, and you can also check in your kids, or if your kids have it, they can check in themselves at the youth, and um, they're able to check themselves in both in the junior high and the senior high over there. Uh, uh, every uh, During service, they can do that. So take advantage of that. There will be lots of information on there for you, so get that downloaded from the App Store on whichever device you use, iPhone or the other ones that don't matter. Um, no, Y'all missed that one. Everybody missed it. All right. Wake up, people. Listen, I'm telling jokes and no one's laughing. Okay. So the next thing is our missions. They're doing fundraising. Our ladies are going on our trip to the Dominican. So we have fundraisers going on out in the commons. Uh, right now we have the envelope fundraiser where you can take an envelope and you fill it with the amount of cash that's on the front of it and then you turn it back in. We're also taking donations for crafts and if you want to uh, commit to bake for a bake sale that we're going to be uh, putting on at Phelps on May 28th. We have a sign out there on that table to remind you of that. So if you have crafts or something that you make or something you'd like to donate for us to sell at Phelps that day or if you'd like to bake something uh, for us to sell please get a hold of Pastor Bob and he can um, get you hooked up with that also uh, May 15th this coming Sunday is um, wait what is today yeah May 15th I just lost time like seriously um, <laughs> May 15th is Disclosure. Sunday night is Disclosure with Pastor Greg. Uh, Sunday night school, so don't forget to uh, attend that. And then also uh, on Sunday, Pastor's going to continue with the press uh, that he's been teaching on. It's been really awesome. Uh, so if you've missed any, you want to make sure and watch those online, which you can also do on the app. Um, You'll want to get a hold of those and, and make sure you stay caught up because it's, really, it's a really terrific teaching. So I'm going to um, talk about our offering now. Yes. So I just want to remind everybody, uh, you know, with our tithes and offerings, uh, we give our 10% and then we give what God puts on our heart to give for offering. And if you're looking for opportunities, you're going to find plenty here at Lake Church. <laughs> I know sometimes it seems like we're always asking for money, but we're not asking for money. We're asking for your partnership because I, I hope that when you give money that you also then have it in your mind to give your prayers uh, for whatever it is you're giving to, whether it's the building or the mission trip or things like that. And so we currently do have our women's mission trip to the Dominican coming up. And just three weeks after that, our youth are taking their uh, first mission trip to the Dominican. So if you have a desire to sow, that would be a good place for you to sow some offering into uh, one of those mission trips. The youth are super excited. It's a group of young people who have uh, said that they're interested in doing missions, that they feel like God is calling them towards this. And so they want to go and experience it and, and see what it's all about. So uh, for most of them, I think all of them except for one, this will be their first, uh, their first one out of country. So it's super exciting. We're excited for them. So be praying for them. Be praying for our, our ladies' trip. And, uh, and if you want to give towards them, that's a great place to sow into. And they would appreciate it very much. <laughs> so I'm going to pray over our offering. And then we're going to uh, get right into our message. Pastor Kevin has an on-time message called, It's Time. Yeah. See, that was witty. Yeah, I'm witty, <laughs> in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, 
I thank you for all of your blessings and your goodness. I thank you, Father, for the heart that you have for us, the love that knows no ends and knows no bounds. I thank you, Father, that you have blessed us with your favor and your prosperity and your good things, Father, that you uh, give us everything that we have that pertains to life and godliness, that you have not withheld anything from us. So as we sow tonight, Father, as we put into uh, tithes and offerings, Lord, just Hear our heart that we want to be a part of your kingdom, of your family, and be sowing into and giving toward the things that you have purposed for us to do here at Lake Church and even through our own personal lives. I thank you, Father, for direction and vision. I thank you, Lord, for utterance and action for Pastor Kevin. I thank you, Father, for every person here, and I pray that they are blessed beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Lake Church. It's good to see everybody tonight. If you would, go ahead and turn your Bible to Hosea chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 12 tonight. Hallelujah, God is good. I don't know if you've been <clears throat> keeping up with a lot of the current events that are going on, I'm sure. I don't sit and just listen to stuff, but I'll see stuff come up on my timeline. And... Uh, you know, they're getting, they're getting ready. I saw about 90 countries preparing to uh, sign on to digital currency. So that tells, that tells you a lot about the spiritual temperature, what's going on in the world. And I was reading, we were in a prayer here Tuesday morning. Pastor told me Monday he was going to be out and wanted me to minister. So I was seeking the Lord, and he led me to this verse. And I just believe it's a call. The Lord is calling us um, to realize, recognize where we're at prophetically and prepare ourselves to be effective in these last days. Uh, you know, the Lord could come back anytime. And uh, I don't believe he's coming back tomorrow because I believe we've got a lot to do. And I believe the church is going out with a bang. But... Uh, we got to be prepared, and, and what God has ordained is going to happen. The question is, are you going to be a part of it or not? <laughs> and, no, we'll be a part of it, but what part are you going to be? That's what we have to decide. What part are we going to be? So let's just, uh, I just want to ask you to stand with me, because I really, I have one shot to deliver this tonight. Pastor will be back next week, so I just want to... I just want to seek the Lord real quick. Father, we just thank you tonight. We thank you for your goodness. We just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We come together tonight, Father God, to hear your heart, to hear from you tonight, Father God, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would direct us, that you would cause us to, to uh, have clarity of thought, to know where we're at, to know what time it is, Father God, to not be caught unaware, Father God, but to be in the know, just like the sons of Issachar, that we would be people who know the times and know what to do, Father God. We just give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Father God, for your presence here tonight. Oh, Lord, you said we're two or more gathered in your name. You'd be in the midst so we just acknowledge your presence tonight, Lord. We thank you that you flow uh, in the anointing just as much in teaching as you do in the gather gifts of the Spirit, Father God. So we come tonight to hear. We come tonight to hear. And I ask you, Father God, to help me not stick to an outline, but to allow you to speak tonight, Father God. I just thank you. I know you've given me a message. And I want to deliver that, but I do want to be open, Father God, and whatever you would have, whatever you would want to say to your people tonight, Father God. We give you glory. We give you praise. I just yield. We yield to the Holy Ghost right now in this place. We thank you, Lord, that the Word makes us free. When we continue in the Word, we know the truth, and the truth we know makes us free. We just thank you for it, Father God. I see a church walking in the light of their redemption in the last days, Father God. 
see a church walking in the power of God, doing the ministry of Jesus, carrying on the same ministry that Jesus exemplified, preaching, teaching, and healing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So let's just, uh, Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. I just want to read this verse and then we'll get into it. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. I want to read that again. Sow for yourself righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Let me say this. It's always time to seek the Lord. But the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, whatever we post, you can't partake of whatever you postpone. We got to quit putting things off till tomorrow. I'm reminded of John chapter 5 when Jesus said to his disciples, he said, don't say there's four more months until the harvest. He said, lift up your eyes and look, the fields are already white for harvest. We got to quit postponing the things that God has already said are ready for us to partake of and to participate in. It's easy, you know, some of us are procrastinators by nature. <laughs> we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta set that aside. It's too serious of a time right now. We, we can't be doing that. We gotta let the word of God build an urgency in us is what I sense. We need to let the word work in our heart and really believe what God has declared and let that cause an urgency to be built in our heart. That we don't think, oh, well, there's always tomorrow. No, there's today. There's today. It says it is time to seek the Lord. It's always time, as I said. And if you understand the book of Hosea, I used to teach this in uh, the Minor Prophets at TBC, which we just finished up our last class of the, of the year last night. Woo. Congratulations to those of you who are in. Just finished up your year. Now I'm just putting a plug in for uh, fall. <laughs> um, you know, we'll be starting a new year in the fall in August. So if the Lord's been speaking to you about going, it's time. <laughs> it's time. It's time. That worked out really good. That worked out really good. <laughs> but if you understand what's happening in the book of Hosea is they had forsaken the Lord. And they were coming up on a, a serious time in their history. And um, when this says it's time... It's not just like it wasn't time, but now it's time. It's fully time. It's like there's no more putting this off. In fact, if you put, sometimes when you put things off, you miss out on something. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's fully time to seek the Lord. It's fully time. Israel had forsaken the Lord, and they had allowed. Here's what happened. I want you to think about this in the light of our current culture they allowed the blessing of the Lord to take the place of the Lord of the blessing. They had become so prosperous that they got their eyes off of the source and they got their eyes on what he had provided for them. And I want to read this to you. This is my little historical, historical setting that I would use in the teaching on the book of Hosea. Just kind of lay a foundation. Though all the gauges of outward success seemed positive for Israel, underneath disaster was lurking. People of Israel were enjoying a time of peace and prosperity. But trouble was brewing, and it would bring the political collapse of the nation in a few short years. 
The social conditions of his day were, and this is really what I wanted to show you, corrupt leadership, unstable family life, widespread immorality, and class hatred. The people continue to form a worship, but idolatry was more and more accepted, and the priests were failing to guide the people in the ways of righteousness. In spite of the darkness of the day, Hosea holds out hope to inspire his people to turn back to God. I tell you what, if that doesn't describe the day and time that we're living in, and we know, time, we know prophetic time cyclical, as Pastor was talking about, I believe we're... These are, this is the end of a biblical cycle. It was always that God would come in and he would bless his people. And then the blessing, because their heart wasn't right, would actually cause them to fall away from and forsake the Lord. They would get so distracted with their stuff. In fact, God, t- he warned them about that. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, when Moses was... Uh, getting ready to, he was getting the children of Israel to go in, ready to go in the promised land with Joshua. He told them, he said, when you come into the land and you're living in houses you didn't build and eating the vineyards you didn't plant and drinking from wells you didn't dig, he said, don't forget the Lord who delivered you out of Egypt and who brought you into the good land. And you know, I don't know about you, I'm just going to be transparent with you. It's sometimes we can be tempted we get out of a life that was so, so messed up. I know for me, man, I came out of a life that was so messed up and where I had totally lost everything and I came to the Lord and his blessing came upon my life and I just started getting all this abundant blessing and everything. And you know, there's a temptation to get your eyes on the blessing. And off of the Lord is a blessing. We cannot afford, especially in the hour that we're living in today, when our nation and the world is in the condition that it's in. The church is the light of the world. If the church is not shining, there is no light. We're it. There's no one else coming. We've got to be serious about our spiritual life because, listen, here's the thing is that God is not withholding. Rebecca said it uh, in, her, um, in her time up here in the opening, you know, that uh, God has already provided. You know, we live, they lived under the law, but we live in the new covenant. And so we live in the uh, fullness of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We live on this side of the cross. And in Christ, now, God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 3. 2 Peter 1 and 3 says, God has given to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. We got to realize God is not withholding anything from us. Listen, Any lack or any lack of experience that we're having in our life, it has nothing to do with God withholding. God is well well ready and able and willing. Uh, He already provided for us 2,000 years ago in Christ Jesus. He provided everything that we would ever need or that he would ever give us in him. And so God isn't waiting. We're not waiting on God God is waiting on us. And thank God for his mercy and his patience. (laughs) His, to use a biblical term, his long suffering. But it's time. It's time. It's past time. But we are not waiting on God. As I said, God is waiting on the church. Anything that's not happening that God is desiring, it's not because he's withholding something, waiting for an appointed time. It is time. It has been time. It's fully time. The problem is, is we've got to quit. We've got to quit postponing till tomorrow what we can do today. We've got to learn to live in the now. In fact, some translations of this verse don't just say for it is time. It says for now 
it is time to seek the Lord. For now it is time to seek the Lord. And like I said, if we're not seeing what we know this word says belongs to us and what it says we should be seeing and experiencing, let me just tell you, it's not on God's end. Now, I know this message probably isn't for any of you in here. It's for the people that are watching online by the internet tonight. So just sit back, relax, pray for them that they'll get it. But, I, you know, I'm sure it has nothing to do with any of you. So just enjoy, just enjoy. So I want to look at what happens here is Hosea, he gives a prescription to change the nation. And I'm not trying to I'm not preaching this from that standpoint that we're to go out and try to change the nation. But we're to change the way the church is functioning within the nation. The nation I'm concerned about is the the new creation nation kingdom of God that Jesus set up on this earth. That's the nation that I'm truly concerned about. I'm listen, I'm not speaking against America because I I love America. It's the greatest nation on earth. I'm glad I live here and nowhere else. But government is not your answer. I'm going to say that again. Government's not your answer. Because if government's your answer, government's your God. Whoever your answer is, is your God. And I don't care who they put in there. The the governments of men are going to fail. It's, you know, government is the answer, but not the governments of men. It's the government of God. If we would get under that... And we would begin to live under the government of God and under the kingship of Jesus Christ here on the earth, then we could start making an impact. You know, but Jesus never said go out and uh, go out and petition your government to change things. No, what did he say? Go out and preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations. How do we change the world? One heart at a time. We get serious about sitting down with people discipling people to where we bring them to a place of maturity where they can go out and they can disciple somebody. And you can go and disciple somebody else and they can go out and disciple too, you know. And we get to multiplying this thing on a grassroots level, not on a, not top down, bottom up. Amen. But that's going to require, that's, that's going to require us assessing ourselves and our life And being willing to do whatever it takes to be able to get ourselves in the right condition to make that happen. So Hosea gives them the prescription for change right here in this verse. He says, sow for yourself righteousness. The kingdom of God, this is what I want to share with you first of all, is the kingdom of God is governed by law. You know, God isn't moved by our needs. If he was, all of our needs would be met. (laughs) Jesus said, God, he already knows what you have need of before you ask him. So that tells me that I have some, I'm, I'm, I have a part to play in that. But listen, God isn't moved by our needs. Okay. God's kingdom is governed by law. And I'm not talking about the law of Moses. I'm talking about laws that govern the transference of things from the spiritual realm to the physical realm. Laws work. Uh, Let me say this. Laws govern the kingdom of God. And the thing that we need to understand about laws is laws are consistent. What do I mean by that? They work everywhere all the time. So the key to operating in the things of God and operating in the kingdom of God is to learn the laws that govern the kingdom and cooperate with the laws. See, it's not God, it's not on God's end, it's on our end. We have not taken the time, we have not dedicated ourselves to seeking to understand the kingdom and how it operates because we're distracted with other things. You know, and, you know, a lot of times, here's my excuses. Well, I just don't have enough time. We're busy. 
Let me ask you, who created how many hours there are in a day? (laughs) The problem isn't how much time we have, it's how we spend the time we have. Oh, I know. I felt that one. I just, oh, I mean, I shouldn't have prayed like that at the beginning. But it's, it's really, that's what it is. We have to decide that we're going to learn the laws that govern the kingdom of God. And if God has already given us all things, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Then the key is not that, that we're waiting on God to give us something, is that we have to learn to cooperate with the laws to transfer from the spirit to the natural realm what God has already given to us. Oh, man. <clears throat> laws are consistent. They work everywhere all the time. Just like the natural, natural laws tell us a lot about spiritual laws. It's like gravity. Gravity doesn't work in Oklahoma and not in Florida. It's a, it's a law. It's consistent. And that's what we have to understand is that God's laws are set and he doesn't violate them because we need something. <laughs> the thing about laws, here's something else that, about laws, is that laws always have a benefit and a detriment. So if you cooperate with a law, you get the benefit. If you don't cooperate with a law, you get a detriment. It's kind of like gravity. Gravity is a blessing. It holds us to the planet, Right? But if you don't cooperate with it, it can kill you. (laughs) Same with the laws that govern electricity. You know, if you cooperate them, there's a great benefit. We're running these lights. We're running this air. We're running this microphone that's able to uh, cause you to be able to hear and us to be able to to, uh, stream out to all kinds of platforms all over the world. So electricity is a great blessing. But if you don't cooperate with the laws that govern it, it'll kill you. (laughs) And the church has been killing herself, I believe, because not understanding the laws that govern the kingdom and wondering why God isn't moving and pouring out some kind of revival that it's not time yet for or something. No, here's here's the answer. It's time for us to seek the Lord and to begin to sow to ourselves in righteousness. See, one of the laws that govern the kingdom of God is that it is governed by the law of sowing and reaping. Go ahead and turn over to Galatians chapter 6. And while you're turning, I just want to say this as well. Here's the thing, another thing about laws. You can't cheat them. <laughs> You can't cheat laws. You can only cooperate with them or violate them. But in Galatians chapter 6, in verse 7, he says this. He says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. That's a spiritual law. For For whatever a man sows... That he will also reap. Good or bad? Good or bad? So we can't we can't blame bad the bad things on God, (laughs) and we can't blame Him for the lack of good things in our life. If we want to see change and we want to have God rain righteousness on us, as He says now. He already has in Christ. We're talking about in the old covenant here, and we live in the new. But if we want to experience what he has so abundantly rained down upon us and put within us in Christ Jesus, then we have to begin to sow to ourselves in righteousness. There is a process, sowing and reaping, that we have to get involved in if we're going to end up seeing the results that we want to see. Flip over to Mark chapter 4. Let's look at what Jesus had to say about this. Mark 
Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. This is a parable uh, that Jesus taught about how the kingdom of God operates. And he says, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. In other words, the kingdom of God and experience in the kingdom of God is based on a spiritual law of sowing and reaping. And you're not going to reap where you haven't sown. That's just, we would think a farmer would be crazy if he walked out to his field and he just prayed over it and he never sowed a seed. Say, man, he has lost his ever-loving mind. (laughs) But yet Christians do it all the time. We pray for things we haven't actually sown seed for and that's not how the kingdom of God works. We have, because there's an element that has to be involved in praying in order for prayer to work. Faith has to be. See, prayer doesn't make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. And you can pray and not pray in faith and you won't receive anything. Oh, man. Uh, You can, the Bible says when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have that which you've prayed for. Oh, man, that tells me you can pray and not receive because you haven't prayed in faith. (laughs) And there's a process to get faith. How does faith come? I know you know. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. We've heard a lot of word. Maybe there's something else involved. Huh. <laughs> We've heard a lot of word, but do you know you can hear word and still not have it produce? Because there's another element that's involved that could be causing a problem. It's this sowing and reaping law has to be cooperated with. One other thing before we move on, I, w- I forgot about this, I wanted to share this with you, is that seed always produces after its kind. Seed always produces after its kind. You don't plant tomato seeds and get cucumbers. So if you're you're trying to receive a harvest of healing, then what kind of scriptures, just, just throwing this out there, what kind of scriptures would you think you would need to receive a harvest of healing? Healing scriptures, yeah, 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 yeah. I know I'm kind of being basic, but I'm just trying to lay the foundation on this. Whatever it is we're wanting to see in our life, we have got to meditate on those scriptures. We have to sow that righteousness to ourselves in order to have the faith to receive that of the kingdom of God. That's why when you preach the gospel, if you preach on healing, you're going to have manifestations of healing. If you don't, if you leave healing out, see, there are whole de, there are denominations that believe that healing's not a part of the gospel, so they don't preach that part. They just preach that the gospel is the forgiveness of sins, and so they get a lot of people who come and receive the forgiveness of sins, but there's no manifestation of healing. Why? Because it's the word that contains the seed. It's the word is the seed that contains. That which it declares. You know, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of denominations and they don't experience it. (laughs) You know, that's what we have to realize is that we have to sow to ourselves in righteousness. That which the Bible says belongs to us and that we are to operate in if we're going to see it. Because the kingdom of God works this way. In fact, in that little parable that Jesus taught, he said, he sows, he sleeps, he gets up, he sleeps, he gets up, and it just produces 
He knows not how. There's a system there that just works if you just work it. Oh, man. And I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself because we wonder sometimes, why does it seem like it's not working? Well, that's the first part is that you have to sow the seed. And you have to be intentional about the seed you're sowing. The second part is, he says to break up the fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. And this is where uh, I'm going to be talking to the people online. Because uh, fallow ground is ground that hasn't been cultivated. It's ground that hasn't been tended to. It's ground that ends up like the picture right there. It gets hard and it's unreceptive to the seed of the word. It's not that you don't, you don't sow seed on it. You can sow seed on it. It ain't going to do nothing. Well, when it rains, it's just going to wash it away. You know, my yard at, at the house there, we have an a area of our yard that's real hard. And uh, I put some grass seed down and it just washed it right off into the creek. Not, one, not a bit of it took root. Uh, and that's the way, you know, in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, and you, you can go ahead and turn there if you want to. We'll look at it. He talks about the different types of soil. And the first one is seed that's sown on the wayside, which is hard packed ground. It's not that the seed wasn't sown on it. It was that the seed couldn't get into the soil to begin to germinate and to bring forth Oh, here's why I was saying a minute ago, maybe there's something else we haven't done because we can just hear, hear word, hear word, hear word. Have you ever been hearing a lot of word, but it didn't seem like anything was happening? Am I the only one? Maybe there's something else involved. Fallow ground, as I said, is uncultivated. It's unprepared. It hasn't been prepared to be able to receive the seed and to produce a crop. Okay, so in Matthew chapter 13, he talks about the different types of soil which are symbolic of our heart. And in verse 18, he says, he's explaining, he already told the parable around all of the people. Now he's with his disciples and he's explaining the parable and he says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and doesn't understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. It doesn't even begin to be received by the soil. Okay? Then he says, <clears throat> But he who received the seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. If you notice, it doesn't say if tribulation and persecution arise. It says when. Because anytime you, re you receive the word, tribulation and persecution are going to come to test the word that you've received. The devil comes immediately. The seed that was sown on the wayside, he just takes it away. But there's a stony ground that it actually, a person hears it and they go, oh, that, this is the that's good crowd. <laughs> you know, that's good. But when persecution comes or tribulation that come to challenge that word, they stumble. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, verse 22, now when he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And uh, I've taught this before, and I usually about there, I would say, and I know that you're all good ground. I'm not going to say that anymore. 
I'm just going to say that you need to see what kind of ground you have. Because it's time. It's time to just quit. It's time to quit playing. That's all I'm saying. It's time to quit playing. It's time to quit assuming that we're... It's time to quit assuming we're somewhere we're not. If we don't get real and don't take a true assessment of where we're at, we're never going to change because we assume we're all right and we're just going to keep on doing what we're doing and we're going to keep on getting what we're getting and we're just going to keep on making every excuse that we're making and nothing's going to change. I ain't going to say that anymore. I'm going to say you assess where you're at. I'm not just going to say, now I can prophesy and say that. But I'm assessing where my heart's at. Listen, it doesn't mean your whole heart. You can have parts of your heart in certain areas that are very receptive to the seed of the word of God. And you can have other areas that are hardened to certain areas of the word of God. We need to continually be working on the condition of the soil of our heart so that our heart is receptive to all the word of God. If we want a full manifestation of Jesus Christ in our life, we need to work on our heart where we're receptive to all of the Word of God. I know I'm resistant to parts of the Word of God. I know you're probably resistant to parts of the Word of God and probably real receptive to other parts. But don't we want to be receptive to all of it? We need to realize that even among the good soil, some were a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Where are you going to be satisfied? Where am I going to be satisfied? Am I satisfied with, uh, with having thorns and, and weeds growing in the soil of my heart and choking out? This, you know, the, I can be sowing seed, sowing seed, hearing the word, going through all of the work of doing that part, and it's still not bringing forth a harvest because I haven't taken time to till up the soil of my heart and deal with the hard places that are resisting the seed and the truth of the word of God. You know, what, getting, getting soil ready is the hardest part. <laughs> I remember my uncle used to grow a garden and I hated going over there because I knew we were gonna, <laughs> I knew we were going to get out in the garden, especially when he was getting it going because he had an old real rototiller and it wasn't one of the nice ones. It was one of them old, you know, one of them old ones that had a rope. You had to wind it around the deal and pull on it about 30 times to finally get it going. Then you get that thing and it's, you know, <laughs> that is not easy work. That's hard work. And listen, <laughs> uh, looking at the condition of our heart is not easy. And then plowing it up is, not even, is, is even harder. <clears throat> now there's reasons why we haven't tended to our heart the way that we should. So I got a few reasons um, why that might happen. Um, the first one is that the Lord gave me is disappointments. You know, hurts in life cause people to be downtrodden. The first type of soil was the soil that was uh, by the wayside. And what that meant was that was where they walked. Because when they sowed their gardens, they, there were paths that went through them. And as they went, they didn't, they didn't go and put each seed in the ground. They just went sowing. And the part that was packed down from the walking was the wayside. And, you know, um, we can get downtrodden in life through disappointment and hurts that have happened to us. And we say, I'm not letting that happen again. And we harden our heart. Yeah. Come on. And we think we got control of that, that we just, we just use it against people, but it actually it, it works against God and against being receptive to his word as well. Because if we're confronted with a word that maybe hurts a little bit, we're like, well, I ain't getting hurt. That's why I, that's why I hardened my heart, because I ain't, I ain't getting hurt. You know, we've been brokenhearted and, and we've been downtrodden by things in life and we, 
we harden our heart to protect ourselves. And we have to realize that we have to let the Lord, he said that he came to heal the brokenhearted. We need to let him heal the heart and trust him to protect our heart. And if it gets hurt again, he'll heal it again. So disappointments, the second one, discouragement. This is the rocky soil. You know, life can get rocky, trials, persecutions, because of the word can cause us to, uh, what we're believing for to maybe get delayed. And Proverbs says that hope deferred or hope put off makes the heart sick. You know, we have to deal with this stuff. The problem is we just keep pushing it down, yeah. pushing it down, you know, avoiding, avoiding. I'm not going to deal. With, I'm just not going to look at that, yeah. you know, all the while it's hindering us. Yeah. All the while it's hindering us. So rocky soil due to discouragement, you know, we can get so discouraged. We're just like, I ain't going there no more. I, I, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm done with that. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can't do that. We got to get, we got to let the, we got to get with the Lord. We got to let him get them rocks out. Amen. Deal with our heart. Let him heal us. Let him remove that stuff. You know, but that can come. I'm just saying, sometimes it's because of things that have happened to us that are bad. That we just haven't dealt with. But they can hinder. See, uh, what I, reason I started with these is it's not always intentional. Sometimes it's because the devil has strategized against you to mess up your heart because he knows that it's going to keep you from being receptive to the word. Yeah. Come on. That's good. But the third one is distraction. And this is the soil where the thorns were. And it's the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, desire for other things. Now, this is different because this is just like what we talked about Israel in the book of Hosea. They got so blessed. If you notice, this is, a, this is the third soil. This is kind of a progressive thing, too. So then they're getting blessed. They're starting to get the blessing. And then they get distracted by the blessing of the Lord away from the Lord of the blessing. And that, that can cause us to, we can get so blessed, we can have so many other things that crowd out the things that are the most important. Hmm. This will be over in a minute, so. <laughs> but you know, the thorny soil, this is soil that, has been overgrown. So from time, it's began to grow other things. And the, so the seed had gotten into the soil and began to sprout and grow, but then it gets choked out. Distractions of life. Things that, you know, we, we stop putting first things first. You know. Uh, we stop... <laughs> I'm just thinking about myself, so I'm sorry. I just, it, it's easy to get your priorities out of whack. And we don't realize, we think it's innocent, but it affects our heart. Yes. Just like that garden, you can plow that up. And when you get done with that rototiller, you get done plowing, I mean, it's it's nice, dark, rich soil. All the weeds are gone. But if you don't continually pull the weeds, in a little while, it's going to be overgrown with weeds and stuff again. That's why I hate going to my uncle's house, because I knew we were going to get down in there and we were going to pull weeds. <laughs> and that's not fun either. But we have to assess the ground, see what it's looking like, and we have to be willing to get rid of what's hindering what we really want. Oh, man, because I know, I know you guys want to see. I want to see the fullness of what Jesus died for me to experience, not just for myself, but through me to other people. Oh, man, but uh, it's a matter of stewardship. 
It's what I was saying about the time earlier is God created how many hours there are in a day. It's not that, it's not that we don't have enough time. It's that we're not managing it. <laughs> it's that we're not managing it well. We're not putting first things first. So those are some of the reasons. So if we find ourselves, and as I'm talking, you're probably thinking to yourself, Where, what's the condition of my heart? Because let me tell you, I know what you're sowing by what you're growing. <laughs> I know what, I know, let me say it like this. I know what I'm sowing by looking at what I'm growing or the lack thereof. <laughs> so I'm looking at assessing the soil of my heart because here's the thing. The seed, there's not a problem with the seed. We're talking about the incorruptible seed of the word of God. The seed of the word of God has the very life, nature, and character of God Almighty in it. So there's no problem with the seed. The determining factor or the variable that, that gets plugged in there that determines the outcome of the harvest, whether there is one or how much of a harvest there is, is the soil. <laughs> there again, it's not on God's end. <laughs> It's on my end. So if you find yourself, how do I get myself? What do I do? How do I break up the fallow ground of my heart? Well, turn to Matthew chapter 5. I believe this is um, the steps to breaking up the fallow ground of our heart and getting ourselves in the right condition to where our hearts are receptive to the word so that we really receive it in and it begins to grow and produce and not just for a little while, but it brings forth the fruit of the kingdom of God. It brings forth the fruit of the kingdom of God. So in Matthew chapter five, and as I was looking at these, I recognized going through this process early on in my Christian walk. But it says in uh, Matthew five and verse three, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Number one, blessed are those who recognize their um, condition outside of Christ or walking outside of a close relationship with Christ. Because listen, Jesus said this. He said, apart from me, you can do some things. No, no. He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And we have to realize that we are, a hundred, we have to live 100% dependent on the Lord. What happens, I think, a lot of times is that we become believers and we start learning some things and we see some things happen and we just kind of get self-sufficient. We start believing our own headlines. We start having confidence in what we're able to do. It's actually the Lord doing it through us, but we start thinking that we did it. <laughs> well, that's what the Lord told them in Deuteronomy when they were getting ready to go in the promised land. He said, you, you're going to get there and you're going to get blessed and you're going to start thinking, we did this. That's what he said to them. And that's what happens. We start thinking, we need to come back to the beginning and realize, listen, without him, I am destitute. I am depraved. I have no ability whatsoever to produce the righteousness of God without God being the one who's working through me. I remember being that way. When I first got saved, my life was so trashed <laughs> that I had no confidence in myself to do anything. And you know what? That's a great place to be. Not to stay, but to be. <laughs> Whenever I came into uh, my uh, relationship with the Lord and began to fall on him, I was totally dependent on him because I had no confidence in myself to do anything. 
In fact, if you remember when I was teaching the book of Romans, the first few chapters, what Paul is doing is sweeping the legs out from under every person in the world to believe that there is anything that they can do whatsoever to produce the righteousness of God in their own life, independent or irrespective of God. That's the biggest mistake, to be so prideful or arrogant to start believing that we can do something without him. I'm a hundred. We have to learn to live independence, not independent, independence on God. That's the problem. In this, in this nation that we live in, the nation that, that preaches an independent spirit, that we lose our ability to live independence on God 100%. And because we live in a modern culture where everything's just given to us, produced, we don't even know how it's produced. All of our food, we just go and we just pay for it and we get it and we take it home. We're not a part of the process of growing it and tending to it and harvesting it and all that. And because we live in a modern culture, we don't have to depend on God for that stuff. And it gets over into other areas of our life. We've got to come back to the biblical revelation that apart from him, we can do nothing. (laughs) <laughs> that's part of plowing up your heart. When you start thinking about it, you go, man, I, I actually can do nothing. It leads to the second thing, which says that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's talking about those who realize they have tried to do life irrespective of God. And they realize how inadequate they are to produce the righteousness of God in their life from themselves. And it, li- and it causes godly sorrow that leads to, number two, repentance. We have to allow godly sorrow for how we've tried to live to bring us to a place of repentance. And repentance isn't sorrow. People think repentance is sorrow. So if I just feel bad about it, then I'm repenting. That's not... The word for repentance is metanoia. It means to change your thinking. Godly sorrow, realizing I've tried and failed to live and produce the righteousness of God myself, leads me to a place where I change my mind, quit trusting me, and put my trust back on God. Which leads to number three. Blessed are those, blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Number three, you have to become reliant on God. And the sense that I'm talking about here is that meekness means humility. Okay? And here's here's a tough one for people. Humility is defined best, I believe, as teachableness. (laughs) <laughs> we have to allow our repentance to put our faith in God, and then we have to be teachable. Which means we don't just hear, but we do. <laughs> because uh, knowing in the Bible isn't intellectual, it's experiential. And that's, that's a problem we have in the modern church is we think if we have it intellectually that we know it. And we may not be doing any of it. But we think just because we have it intellectually that we know it and we don't have anything. It's only when you begin to do it that you actually know it. <laughs> in fact, you've heard pastor teach us many times the word Hebrew word for hear is the same as, as doing. So you've only heard when you do. Okay, so we have to get our heart in the right condition that we're not just going to listen, but we're going to actually do because we actually trust that it's going to produce the desired effect in our life. Okay, so then number four is we have to hunger and thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We have to desire to know the ways of God. 
Because only walking in the ways of God is going to lead us into the will of God. That's the only way. When we start to, to actually put that to work in our lives. I remember going through this process when I first got saved. And uh, my heart was so receptive. I, I don't know. Think back to when you first got saved. My heart was so receptive. I was so, I was so open to everything and so hungry for everything that, that God had. That the word, I, I was just thinking about this when I was driving over here. It was like when the word would hit my heart, I could just see it. It just sunk all the way down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's when your heart is soft, when your heart is receptive, man, just every word, it just impacts you so much. Yes, it just, yes. You just are so moved by it, you know. Yes. But when you can hear the word now and then you go, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, man, that's what Pastor was talking about Sunday, about indifference. Yes. He wants it to either make you mad or filled with joy. Because then he knows it's actually getting in to your heart. It's bring, causing some kind of reaction. But just laying on the top, on the wayside, where the devil can just come still, you know, come on, hon, we got to go to lunch, you know. <laughs> That's a sign. That's a sign. Like I said, this isn't for you guys. This is for them. <clears throat> In the last part of that verse in uh, Hosea, he says, to do this until he comes and reigns righteousness. How long do you keep this process up? Till you receive what you're... <laughs> it's a lifestyle. You know, we're, we're so into instant gratification in the modern world. We got everything instant. I mean, I want my... When I pull up to the drive through window... I want that food getting out there. <laughs> you know, but that's not the way the kingdom of God works. Listen, God isn't living by the same time uh, frame that we are. His kingdom is governed by law and he's not in a hurry. I'm just telling you, he is not living by <laughs> the same time that we're so moved by. Well, what do we do? Tend to our heart. So in righteousness. How long? Until he comes and reigns righteousness yes. on your life. In that, book, in that verse in Galatians we read, Galatians 6, 7, and 8, verse 9 says, Do not grow weary in well-doing, for you shall reap in due season if you don't lose heart. Oh, man, if you don't allow your heart to get dis disappointed and discouraged and lose heart and get hardened to the things of God. But if you'll continue to plow up, to break up the fallow ground of your heart and sow righteousness continually, just day and night, raise, going to sleep and waking up, that word will begin to grow up and produce a harvest and you don't even know how it works. It just does. Why? Because in the word, the word of God is seed. It's spiritual seed that contains the very life and nature and character of God on the inside of it. And when you put it in your heart, your heart is a soil that naturally causes that seed to just burst forth with life and release what God put on the inside of it. If you need healing, take the healing scriptures, put them in your heart, meditate on them, and that seed will just begin to produce the life of God. If you need deliverance, I can tell you I was delivered by the word of God. You need deliverance, find the scriptures about deliverance and just pour them, sow them into your heart, meditate, water it by meditating on that. And it'll just cause that seed to germinate and just to release the life of God that's on the inside of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Man, we just have to make the decision. Diagnose our heart, the condition of our heart. Make whatever necessary changes we have to make according to what that I shared with you tonight. Determine to get that process going and don't give up. Man, we get distracted and we just, I don't know, I'm just talking about myself. Yeah. 
We get distracted and we just tend to just, well, there's tomorrow. There's tomorrow. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Hallelujah. Listen, God's not withholding. His desire has been and always will be that we experience the fullness of everything that Jesus died for us to have and to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just stand. Father, we just give you praise. Just thank you, Lord. I just delivered the word that you gave me to deliver. And I thank you, Father God, that it bring forth a harvest. I thank you, Lord God, that it found hearts that are receptive to this word, Father God. That I don't want people to just go, oh, well, that was a good message. I want people to allow that word to cause change in our hearts so that we can be who you created us to be and that we can do what you created us to do. Father, that we could glorify you by not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word, Father God, that we produce the fruit of your kingdom in this earth so people can taste and see that you are good, Father God. I just thank you, Father. I just declare that people are going to take this serious and they're going to experience not just divine healing, but divine health as they begin to sow the word of God in their heart, their health will spring forth speedily in the name of Jesus. Oh, and I thank you, Father God, as we place your word in our heart, that we are delivered by your word. As you said, that we will know the truth and that the truth will make us free, Father God. Hallelujah. I just thank you for it, Father. Just give you praise and give you glory. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. I thank you that you are present here tonight. Hallelujah. I thank you that you are present here tonight and that you're desirous to move uh, through your people tonight, Father God, uh, to meet any needs that people might have here tonight, Father God, that your heart is to, to, to bless your people, to touch your people, to heal your people, to deliver your people, to save them, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We just give you praise, Father God. Thank you so much, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's time to do some plowing. It's time to do some plowing, some preparing. Hallelujah. It's time to prepare. Just hear that, man, going off in my heart. It's time to do some preparation work, the roll up your sleeves kind of work where we prepare for what God has already given and, and said yes to, what he's already said yes to. I sent somebody thinking in their mind, wrestling with whether something's God's will tonight. I'll tell you right now, he said yes to it. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires. He'll put the desires, his desires in your heart. Get in the process. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel like there's people that have had dreams that they've given up on because life has happened. And they've just said, well, I guess that's not going to happen. The Lord says, no, 
The Lord says, no, don't give up on that dream that I've given to you. Get in the process. Deal with your heart. Do your part. Sow the seed of my word in your heart. Tend to your heart. And my word will produce the thing that I have already said yes to in your life, that I wrote about in the book of your life before the foundation of the world. Stop wavering between two opinions. Stop being tossed about to and fro by the winds of doubt. Deal with your heart and you'll find the solid ground to stand on, to stand and believe despite of the adversity that's come into your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Get your heart right in the right condition and you'll see. Sow the seeds of righteousness and you shall see that which you have seen in your heart happen in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just give you glory, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, as we close, there's going to be ministers up here. Just want to keep an attitude, this, this atmosphere of worship. If you have needs, you want someone to pray with you and agree with you about something. If you need healing in your body, deliverance, those are things God has provided to us in Christ. They already belong to you. I want to encourage you to come up. Don't leave needing something tonight. Don't leave. Take advantage. Sometimes we need to come together. Call for our elders of the church. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Sometimes we need to confess something. Pray for each other so that we can be healed. I just want to encourage you to do that. Remind you that this Sunday, you want to be here, Pastor, be continuing the press. You don't want to miss it. Just be sure and be here Sunday. But if you have any needs, I just want to keep this atmosphere. Just come forth. The ministers will be up here to minister to you. You're dismissed.